Hey guys, we're going to have a little talk about uh, Tapanopus sessile. Um, a lot of folks have them. They're very common. Um, they're pretty much everywhere in North America. They're probably not one species. Uh, there's a lot of discussion right now as far as naming and characterization. It's probably a species group and they're probably, you know, several different species that are all called Tapanopus sessile right now. But you, know, you, you can look at ours and they're probably going to look different than, than the ones that uh, that you have even within Ohio, we've we've seen pictures of folks that, that catch them up in northern Ohio, and they look completely different. So, it's probably a species group, um, but um, they have some biology that's that's very different than than most ants. Um, they are they're a polygynous species, and uh, if you're paying attention, you've seen a bunch of queens already. I don't know how many queens we have in this colony. This colony was caught. Um, from like three different walnuts, there were, I don't know, 50 workers or something like that a year ago. So it's, it's grown a lot. Um, and uh, we've given away uh, a, bunch of, a bunch of ants off of this colony also. So um, they have regular nuptial flights and they also um, spread and colonize and, and, and split up and make new colonies via budding. Um, and that's why we set the habitat up this way because Tapanoma sessile will sometimes fly, but they will mate uh, brother and sister in the nest, which is what's going on right now if you if you look. Um, uh, they will have a nuptial flight sometimes, and you can catch the queens. Um, and I'll zoom in on a queen here in a little bit. Well, actually, you can just see a bunch of them right there. Um, and you can find these ladies after a nuptial flight, but they will, uh, uh, they will often just mate in the nest and in captivity since they can't really fly and they don't get the uh, signal to fly. And you can see a bunch on the water there. Um, and they're drones as well. You can see they're drones and guines. They don't really get the signal to fly, so they usually run around like crazy like this for a week or so. And then they will mate and drop their wings and the drones die and the uh, uh, guines will set up a shop. And we set up this habitat this way because naturally, what happens after this internal nuptial flight is queens will often take off with a few workers and go start a new colony. So that's why we have test tubes set up everywhere. Last year, we started everybody in this test tube right here, and they spread to two or three other test tubes, and one of them over there, and we kept pulling them off one by one and giving them to, giving them to people. And, uh, and then they would repopulate. And then this spring, we put these five tubes on the back, and only one of them basically is unpopulated. So what's gonna happen is, after this nuptial flight, the queens will grab some workers and they will probably populate these other four tubes. And I, I haven't really counted, but we probably have four dozen queens maybe. And there's probably 50 of them because every one of these tubes has a bunch of queens in them. Uh, and then there's a ton running around the outworld. There's some egg there if you're wondering what that stuff is. Let's see if I can get a little zoom in here. I don't have a macro lens on, so it's not gonna be super great. but. You can just see there are queens and there are drones running around everywhere. And everybody's just crazy. And they do this all day long, every day, and they have for a week. So I did see a worker um, carrying around a, uh, a dead drone earlier today. So I have a feeling that the mating has started. Um, and uh, so I expect over the next few days that this behavior will stop and then drones will die. And the queens will drop their wings and then uh, our colony will get, get super big. The queens can lay as many as 20 to 30 eggs a day. <laughs> Average is 350 over the course of a summer, but even if we only have 20 guines here and they only lay 350 eggs each, you know, that's still 7,000 workers this summer. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's grown like crazy already, even though we've been giving it away. Probably by the end of the summer, we're gonna have to start taking these and dropping tubes outside because it'll just get too big. Um, we can certainly expand this habitat uh, but it's just kind of interesting behavior because you, you you will often in captivity get guines and droves produced, but you don't really get kind of flight behavior like this. Um, and later in the evening, they're not really doing it today, but this plant right here was covered at the top with, with drones and guines. I'm um, kind of waiting to fly last night and I should have filmed then, but I was tired and I didn't. Uh, so that's, uh, that's kind of the update and a little information about Tapanoma. Anybody on the Ohio Ants list that wants some Tapanoma, get in touch with me because uh, we've got plenty. Bye.